Welcome to this video in which we look at the interactions between a free body and a free body diagram and elements of its environment to which it is rigidly connected. So we're looking at rigid connections. Uh, sometimes you'll see these called fixed supports. The idea is we're looking at, for example, the connection between the stop sign and the ground here. It keeps the stop sign fixed and vertical. Okay, so I might have wind that blows on the stop sign that might want to rotate it so that it might fall over, but a rigid connection will hopefully keep the stop sign fixed and vertical. Okay, so um, it turns out that rigid connections lead to unknown forces in both the x and y direction, as well as a couple at the uh, uh, point where the force is applied. Uh, so uh, this is, in some sense, the most general situation in the sense that uh, it gives you the most things that are unknown. So as an example, let's look at the pole that holds up the stop sign. So we'll define our system to be this pole. Okay, and uh, so that would be step one in developing a free body diagram. Step two would be drawing the pole, which I have done right there. Step three is understanding where the system has been cut from its environment. So if the system's going to be the pole, we'll cut it right here between the pole and the sign, and we'll cut it right here where the pole uh, enters the ground. Okay, and this is where we'll end up with uh, uh, forces and couples at those cuts. We'll also uh, assume that the center of gravity of the pole is at its midpoint. And so uh, step four in developing a free body diagram is to now figure out what the forces and couples look like. Okay, so at the bottom I will have a force that could conceivably include an X component and a Y component as well as a couple about this point. Okay, so this might be F bottom X, F bottom Y, and the couple around the bottom connection. Now, at the top, again, because the top was also, uh, or is also a rigid connection with the sign, again, I might have a, a force in the X direction a force in the y direction as well as a couple. So I might call this F top X, F top Y, and the couple Y. Okay, and then I would still have at the midpoint of the pole the weight associated with the pole. Okay, in this one we would know that the the force is directed down, and we, if we know the weight of the pole, we could actually then figure out the magnitude of that force as well. So, um, basically, uh, what we have here then is, uh, a, again, a rigid uh, connection means that there could be an unknown force in the x and y direction or equivalently, we might represent it just as a force whose magnitude and direction is unknown. And then there will be a moment or a couple um, around uh, the point where that force is applied. So hopefully this makes sense, um, and uh, this will conclude this video.